Hey, y'all, from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that was built to build a beautiful online presence for you and to help you run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes. All websites are optimized for mobile right out the box, and it is so easy to get started. You just pick out a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it all your own. So head to squarespace.com slash read to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch your site, use offer code read to save 10% off your first purchase. Let them know Kiff here and Crystal sent you. All right, let's move on. This message is coming from Sponsors 3M, who are using science and innovation to help the world respond to COVID-19, which means they're already doing better than most of us. 3M plants are running around the clock, producing more than 95 million respirators per month in the U.S. In addition, 3M has also maximized production of other solutions, including biopharma filtration, hand sanitizers, and disinfectants. Learn more at 3M.com slash covid 3 m Science applied to life. Let's begin. Well, there. Hello, and how do you do, nigga? Uh, welcome back to this. I am the black static fact that Patti LaBelle absolutely washed Judy Garland in Somewhere Over the Rainbow, and there's nothing that you can ever do about it but steam. Okay, and I am a hot, sexy, ratchet god warrior, and this is The Read. Thanks for coming back. It is. Thank you again, and let's begin with some black excellence this week. It is going to... A Nigerian athlete named Amina Idris probably butchered that. I apologize, madam, if I did. Uh, This queen just won the gold medal in Taekwondo at the National Sports Festival. Oh, go off. While, you know, just happening to be eight months pregnant. Shut up. (laughs) What? So she's 26 years old. She's been training uh, for quite some time, she said. Well, she said, I just decided to give it a try after training a couple of times. It feels real good. Before I got pregnant, I've always enjoyed training, so it didn't seem different with pregnancy, which is what she apparently (laughs) told CNN. So not only did she win a gold in the mixed Pumse category, I don't know what that word means. I looked it up. I think it's uh, it means form in another language Korean maybe forgive me people that know better um but yeah she won a gold for the mixed version she won a silver in in female team and then she won a bronze in the individual so the dolls um you know got the chains around her neck she's meddled up uh also a while with child that's due you know in the coming weeks i suppose yeah um that's really what's blowing my mind like i know taekwondo is not like a fighting sport but you still gotta do like hella shit with your arms and legs i'm pretty sure and so i mean (laughs) it's quite physical in fact apparently there were some people who were trying to be like why is she doing this while she's pregnant etc etc and the chairman of the organizing committee for the national sports festival said i i she was certified and cleared to participate. She had also been training for months prior to her participation in the tournament. Right. So get into it. I watched a clip of her um, of her on the mat or whatever you would the floor. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> and, you know, it looked like things I can't do. It also looked like things I love, like uh, Marvel films and shows. Mm. And apparently this young woman is from Lagos and this whole festival took place somewhere in Nigeria, I believe. Beautiful. Edo State. Um, but yeah, I thought that that was awesome. And just another, uh, you know, small reminder that women are superhuman mm-hmm. and they should have been running the planet all along. Yeah. Because doing all that with a whole human just like lodged in your midsection seems... <laughs> Mm-hmm. all but impossible to me so congratulations to her 
Like the baby comes out and is like, don't even bother smacking me. I have some things I'd like, like- to say. <laughs> so <laughs> about five weeks or so ago, um, what the fuck was that about? <laughs> like, here I am minding my goddamn business, just ready to finish cooking and Watch her birth. Now it's Iron Fist. Another little Taekwondo star. It'll be like uh, Serena and Olympia. Yeah. <laughs> because Olympia's coming. <laughs> like, and she'd be out there in her like, little outfit. <laughs> simply shiver and quake. <laughs> like, there's nothing that you can do. Like, the doll's coming. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she <laughs> is. Y'all better get ready. <laughs> Unless she decides to, you know, be an expert at something else. Like, I don't know, building space stations or whatever else. She'll be a prodigy. <sighs> right. And, but you if know, she wants let to her do come that little tennis thing, tennis. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> it's it's already a wrap. Cry about it. Yeah. Um. So this week in our pop culture segment, hot tops, little bottoms everywhere, <laughs> we're gonna start with um. So important. Start with the bad and sad news. We've officially had to say goodbye to the iconic, legendary rapper DMX. Um. It's been a pretty tough week for fans of his and Mm -hmm, mm hip-hop. And contrary to certain dumb niggas' (laughs) belief, DMX has received flowers while he was here for a while. And I think one of my favorite things about him is um, how many people he has been able to touch through his sheer openness and transparency with his struggles, with his demons, with his battles. Yeah. And how many people he's inspired to, like, find help for their their selves in similar situations. And also how openly, you know, he leaned on his faith in God and, like, also walked people into that. Like, I just feel like DMX, for all of his imperfections... Has probably done like more, has probably been one of the niggas in rap has, who has done like more positive for fans of his yeah. than a lot of the other sprinkles of niggas out here today. Definitely. So it was very sad. Definitely. Um, and reached a lot more people. Like I know young niggas like to say stupid shit, but DMX was, was a, a massive hit at his like commercial peak and, um, even Kia wrote like this really moving piece about uh, DMX and faith. Oh yeah, just for insider. Just you know, you know just, just a little, things one does. <laughs> just a little, you know. But yeah, it's it's rare that a rapper that popular, um, who also has you know lyrics that even he looked back on and was like, "Ooh, shit, I can't write." <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> it, it is rare for a rapper to to reach across and and just touch that many different people with their story. And I mean, I said most of what I wanted to say last week, so I won't sit here and repeat it. But it's just yeah. sad and yeah, a sad time for niggas who you know grew up during his heyday and really fucking loved his music. It's it's just a tragedy. I will admit, though, I found just a little taste of solace because when I read it officially, I was getting ready to start working and I got two, literally at the same time, two notifications from The Hollywood Reporter. And one said, you know, rapper DMX passes away at 50. And the one right underneath it announced that Queen Elizabeth's cousin also (laughs) has, you know. And so there was a little bit of a like, uh, I'm not even going to front. That softened the blow for me. Oh, yeah. And I'm no. not ashamed to say it. It I definitely don't care. did. It definitely did. The news about Prince, whoever the fuck, that came out like first thing that morning. So I had mm-hmm. seen that a few hours before. So naturally, I was online making fun of him because <laughs> what do I give a fuck about the English yeah. monarchy? Like literally nothing. Okay, a colonizer died, like the king colonizer. Am I supposed to weep about this? I don't give a fuck. Sure don't. But then, of course, the news about DMX came out so people confused my making fun of Prince Philip for like making fun of DMX, which just doesn't even make sense if you know anything about it. Don't sound like your problem. Right. I mean, it isn't, but um, I too had a lot of joy that day just Mm. from making fun of that decrepit old white man who certainly died back in like 1994 at the latest. I, I got a lot of joy out of mocking that shit and seeing people like 
be all devastated over this man. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. What did what did Prince whoever the hell actually do for your life? Like literally ever any material Not thing? Not a one damn thing, girl. <laughs> all of you bitches posted them old dusty sepia covered ass pictures of him and his and his Get lady. When I don't give a fuck about mm-hmm. that. I don't or him. Or none of what you bitches is talking about. Sure don't. Sure don't. And I don't give a fuck how Megan. anybody feels about it. Right. And, gir- and guess what the fuck else? I don't care <laughs> if that motherfucking interview did cause him to finally give up. <laughs> Bye. He should have gave up a long time ago. Like in the 80s. <laughs> so there's that, first of all. <laughs> don't care. Look up the receipts. If you think that I'm finna sit here no, and bat a not. single eyelash... Over Mm-mm. that fucking listen. Nope. And Girl. and and for y'all to really be question why Meghan Markle, who is like seven, eight months pregnant, is at home in California mm-hmm. with her damn baby instead of on a plane to go be around them niggas who stressed her the fuck out so bad they had to leave in the first place. Girl, please be serious. It was enough for Harry to go back and let that be that. I'm far more broken up over uh, Dumbledore than I ever will be. Anybody, listen, keep it moving. I'm more broken up about J.K. Rowling than I am about whoever that man was that died. (laughs) Fuck him. I mean. I just, I wish we had not lost her the way we did, but we did. Get too violent. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Speaking of old people that should have been dead a long time ago, Medea is back. Um, Apparently, Medea is coming to Showtime with their own TV series. What? Apparently, the working title or official title is Mabel. Showtime? Yeah, Showtime is developing an origin story for Mabel Simmons. Who's playing Mabel? So this is going to... Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) Not Tyler Perry, I know that. Okay, I was finna ask, because I could have sworn he said he was done doing that shit. Exactly, which is why I had to click when I read this. <laughs> we need clarification. Because it was like halfway through Medea's like big screen, you know, success that Tyler Perry in every interview, they'd ask him what the weather was like and he would be like, who gives a fuck? I hate Medea. <laughs> I never want to put that shit on again. That suit is tight. I hate it. The yeah. wig is terrible. Like, he <laughs> took every opportunity to say how he much did. he hated playing He Medea. did. So I knew he wasn't coming back for it. So it makes sense that apparently the show is going to follow Medea in her 20s when she moves to Atlanta in oh, 1972. Lord. Oh, wait. <laughs> now, what interests me about this is oh, um, apparently Tyler Perry will not be writing the show. He will be executive producing. Yeah. And alongside him will be executive producing and writing twin sisters and black goddesses, Janika and Jashika James. Um, I don't know. If, I mean, you can simply Google them to revel in their beauty. <laughs> my God, they're beautiful. <laughs> but... I'm actually so here's the thing. A uh, Medea in her 20s storyline could be intriguing. It could. And and I think that the reason I would have immediately been like, eh, is if he was writing. Oh, yeah. I'm, and I have no problem admitting that. No, that surprises nobody. Mm-hmm. So the fact that two black women are gonna be writing this story about this particular pretty iconic black character mm-hmm. in her 20s and 70s Atlanta, that show could be fun. It could. Like now, I know they're still going to have to keep some of the Medea, Medea-isms that Tyler Perry created. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, who is this person? Right. So there's probably still going to be some stuff that's like, oh, yeah, that. But <laughs> I... <laughs> oh, yeah, that. <laughs> but I'm actually intrigued to see what 20-something-year-old Medea is like and maybe when she meets Brown or or gets Something, pregnant with Cora. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to we're going to see the first time that she shot somebody and <laughs> <laughs> right. the first time she robbed a nigga. We're going to see Medea at, at Freak Nick 20 years after that. We're going to see like This could be a lot of fun. It could be. It really could. I mean, <laughs> I will I will give it a shot. Uh like you said, Me because too. Tyler is not writing it. 
I mean, I can't say no shade, but um, there isn't. the fact that it's not on OWN or, or Tyler Perry Networks or BET Plus or whatever should have been a hint for me that he wasn't going to be writing it. But <laughs> yeah, we will. We'll, we'll see how this goes. I am intrigued. All right, Showtime. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be cautiously, cautiously optimistic. Yeah, because I usually shit all over anything to do with <laughs> with that old. Mm, but I will, if it's just written by it. Tyler Perry on it, I'm just like, okay, let's. How's this? How am I gonna hate this? Because <laughs> it's, it's just like it always dances around possibility, and it's like, oh, there. Yeah, there but I will give it a shot. We we'll, we will see. Um. So <laughs> Will Smith and Antoine Fuqua Mm-mm. are working on a new thriller titled Emancipation. That was supposed to be filmed in Georgia. Well, apparently, they've released a statement that they will no longer be filming their film in Georgia <laughs> because uh, Brian Kent got them fucked up yep. with this voting bill and sucked their dicks, basically. <laughs> um, oh, so, oh. if you don't know or didn't know, Google's free, but. Uh, maybe you could just put in Brian Kemp voting bill. I don't know, or or Georgia Senate bill Georgia to, voter or, restriction. A bunch of different keywords will bring it up. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of things. I don't think you have to work hard to find it. <laughs> just Georgia and racism is probably enough. Honestly, it's probably on the yeah. first page. But essentially, you know, um, racists, Republicans, mm-hmm. um, uh, Trump. So they just want to make sure that niggas never Mm -hmm. see, like, anything near a voting ballot. Yeah. They don't want you to sniff the paper. They don't want you to fucking, like, get a glimpse of the machines. Like, they don't want niggas nowhere near voting. You'd almost be shocked to hear that the year is 2000. And 21 of them things. <laughs> but it is. Yeah, but it is. So Will Smith and, and Antoine... Antoine took... <laughs> Antoine. Will Smith and Antoine took their slavery movie on about their business. And where they're filming... Mm-mm. I don't know if they've said. But they've made it very clear... Uh, that they can't film uh, in a government that enacts regressive voting laws that are designed to restrict voter access. Okay. I mean, I'm not mad at that. A a slave rebellion (laughs) movie written by a white man don't sound like something I want to watch. Yeah, I wasn't going. So I I kind of feel like maybe y'all should just (laughs) stop now while you're ahead and, and leave it right there. But... Um. Yeah, I'm not mad at at Georgia losing business. As always, I feel sorry for the regular everyday people who are affected by these decisions. Same way I feel sorry for the regular everyday people, black people, especially in Georgia, just trying to live and work and pay their bills and vote like they have the constitutional right to do. And then here come the government fucking everything up. So going to blame all well, this on the crackers who stole the election from Stacey Abrams down there in the first damn place because it is their fault. I mean, literally. Literally but stole it. We saw it. Don't worry too much because Disney, Netflix, Marvel Studios, lots of the girls, Warner Media, they film in Georgia literally all of the time. I mean, you could watch so many of the Marvel films and other shit on Netflix, and you will certainly see a Georgia Peach somewhere mm-hmm. towards the end of the credits because Georgia has set up laws in that state that is like great for movie studios yeah. i don't remember the specifics for it it's a lot there's of tax a reason cuts and stuff. why they go and use them big ass studios and stuff like that and why tyler perry himself mm-hmm. has <laughs> you know bought half of atlanta for the, very, <laughs> for the very same reason yeah they go down to tyler's compound <laughs> and now, shoot their movie most of these other studios have either said nothing or been like Hey, now, that's not cool, guys. And then left it at that. So, yeah, I mean, that's what's going on in Georgia. That's about what I expect out of most corporations. Like, I don't expect 
most of them to like actually stand up and do the quote unquote right thing because most of them are run by the same white boys who are pulling that bullshit in Georgia right damn now. So I mean, why why would they stand up against their cousin? <laughs> they high fiving that nigga at Thanksgiving. So not shocked, and it's really just another day in the hellhole that is America when you really sit and think about it. Well, Paul Pierce is jobless, but at least he doesn't have a job with ESPN anymore. Paul Pierce is a former player for the National Basketball Association, Mm -hmm. which is also sometimes referred to as the NBA. It is an association where people play the game of basketball. (laughs) Basketball is a game where five players versus five players typically (laughs) stand on a court. And they run back and forth on it with the ball and they throw it. So this nigga used to do that, and then he was working with ESPN to talk about doing that, which is what a lot of niggas who don't play sports anymore do. I guess at least the ones that y'all think are charismatic or funny or... Yeah, talented enough even. Yeah, whatever. I don't know what... (laughs) I mean, what? I know everything about sports. (laughs) That's not the point. Paul Pierce, um, for whatever reason made very poor decisions this past week. Um, He decided to have a butt-naked stripper party. Well, the strippers weren't butt-naked in the video that we saw, but he had some strippers and some poker and uh, some blunts, probably some cognac Mm -hmm. and cable. Mm-hmm. Amen. I don't know um, whose humble abode this is that he was streaming from, but I'm here to tell you that Mr. Pierce was smacked. I want to like let he was blasted to infinity and beyond. Ooh, jealous. <laughs> and for whatever reason, felt like sharing it on Instagram Live. Now, here's where the big mistake happened because why? You know, you could have had your stripper. Um, water buffalo gang whatever this shit is shit is it a birthday like you could have i don't know what the celebration of this it just seemed like you know a guy's night and they had ass cheeks and i didn't see any lemon pepper wings so honestly what kind of function was this (laughs) even like the girls had all of them in the back like you could have at least afforded to get some fucking lemon pepper off Wingstop on goddamn Postmates. like mm-hmm. And tell them to fry it hard. But I'm making assumptions. I didn't see every square foot of, of the venue. Anyway, so someone said that this nigga thought he was on Close Friends Instagram, which I didn't even know that y'all can do. Uh, alas, he was not. He was on wide-ass open Instagram <laughs> for everybody to see. <laughs> With one eye open and some light-skinned girl in a G-string giving him some sort of very terrible-looking massage. Meanwhile, another young lady is busting it open in the background. I really didn't see any money flying anywhere. So, again, I'm asking what kind of function was this? Was it last minute? Where's the enthusiasm? (laughs) Anyway, so... maybe. Once again, Paul Pierce worked for ESPN, who works for Disney, who said, girl, get the fuck. So he doesn't work there anymore. You can send him, you know, well wishes on whatever his uh, Instagram is. I think it's just Paul Pierce. But I don't know what the doll was thinking. I mean, that nigga will be fine. I also, can you go live and only broadcast to your close friends? I said I have no. I the feel fuck like idea. you can't do that. I don't go on Instagram live. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I have not so, gone live on Instagram in at least a year, but I'm pretty sure you can't just. Go, maybe that's a new feature they rolled out, but you probably can't. Right? I'm not doubting. Regardless, it was no a idea. dumb move to go live from your actual, real, verified account, knowing that you were doing shit that was in violation of your contract with your job. I don't understand why go live at all. Why go live? <laughs> At, at all, all. <laughs> I don't understand why if you married Paul Pierce who works for Disney are gonna have clits and chicken wings hopefully at your blunt and poker party 
that you should have a nigga with a fucking one of those little plastic buckets from any office depot Mm -hmm. that is collecting mobile devices at the goddamn door. Why are you motherfuckers always the one with money (laughs) and resources? Why can't some other motherfuckers be rich for a goddamn change Mm -hmm. and have titties on a random weekend or whatever? Tell these niggas. (laughs) I wish I could have clits and chicken wings and and blunts and games at a big ass house party and strippers all over the place and all that shit. And the only thing I got to do is not tell the world, (laughs) bitch. Okay, I'm paying all them girls a flat rate for the night. You just tell me what it costs and I'm paying it. And you and your security come on to the house and we finna have a good time. Why couldn't just be that? You had somebody go down to the office depot to get you half a dozen of these goddamn office chairs and like these little roly poly cubicle ass chairs. You have six, six, seven of those, but nobody could come and get you a (laughs) lockbox for your phones. I'm not not shedding no tears for this nigga. He'll be all right. (laughs) The boosy effect. This is what happens. (laughs) I heard he's still asking for his Instagram or Mark Zuckerberg banned the other He has one. another one. He's never going anywhere. Yeah. I don't know, like, why. Yeah. He was just on Instagram the other day talking about how much he loves that JT said, I like to be felt like a slut, which is the best line on that dumbass song, which I agree. I, that's probably the only thing I can think of that I've agreed with, with Boosie. But he's singing the song in the back of his car or whatever and talking about how fire that line is. <laughs> Plot twist. He's saying it to like one of his kids ah, that looks no ah. older than maybe eleven. Oh my god! But of course, in you know Jesus that shot. Delete it again, Next. Instagram. Delete it again. So Kaylani maybe soft came out as an official lesbian. This was somebody actually minding their business. Mm. Now. Kalani was like in a kitchen with one of her homegirls there on live. I don't know if this is her live or Kalani's. I don't know. Her friend is a photographer, Jamie Lee B. And they're on Instagram. Look like they may have been cooking or something of the of that sort. To where Kalani pops in the frame and she says, uh, "You want to know what's new about me? I finally know I'm a lesbian." To which her friend gave a little giggle and said, "Bomb drop!" And everybody was like, "Oh." <laughs> like, have you heard of Kaylani? Right. She walks into the room <laughs> and the panties drop to the ground. I was going to say, uh, sister has been real queer for a long time. So <laughs> I nothing about that surprises me. If I'm not mistaken, her baby daddy was like queer, too. And they were just like, let's be her friend. Yeah, yeah she wanted to have like, a baby. let's have a baby and, and be awesome queer parents. And so. Her saying, you know, I realized I'm a lesbian, whether she was joking or not, nothing about that is is a shock to me. <laughs> I love it. At Whatever all. it is, I and support it, girl. Yeah, I'm sure she gets pussy thrown at her all the time. So like literally having all the to time. just sprint down the boulevard mm-hmm. to get away from it. Yeah. I imagine it. Good for her. She's- she tweeted later, I spoke something short and quickly on a live stream of a friend with 30 people on it, a lot of them being people we knew, <laughs> Paul Pierce. I was not making some thirsty announcement. I really didn't expect it to blow up. We knew, though, thanks for the love moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> like, Girl, I wouldn't have expected it to blow up either because that's like the least surprising statement from her. <laughs> She's also spoken very openly about her queerness, about the privilege of being like... Being able to, like, pass as someone who doesn't really... Like, straight passing, cis passing. Not visibly You know, cisgender presented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Like, and how much tougher it is for, like, trans people and black gay men and black masculine gay women. Mm -hmm. So, like... Although, if you ask me, she looks queer, if you ask me. All them tattoos. (laughs) I mean, because we're queer. (laughs) Okay, you're right. It's very easy when you you know you can yeah. spot your cousin <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we can tell. I mean, it's just a whole demeanor that the girls have that yes. I can just automatically sense. So, but the straight girls where it would be an issue. Mm, yeah, yeah, a lot of them may be like, "Oh, she looks like a gay person," or "Oh, Lord. Um, gender queer." Let me ask Woo-hoo. you: Have you ever dived in some pussy? I can see straight mm. people like. 
being ridiculous and OD like this. So fair. And I mean, I completely understand what she's saying. And I agree with that. It is rougher for people who fall outside of like society's norms for gender or, or sexuality and the expression of those things. So yeah, I get it. But once again, least surprising statement from that, it would be more shocking if Kalani said she was straight. I support like exclusively <laughs> any woman who commits to being a lesbian because I feel like good for you yeah. and it's probably best. It's for probably you. for the best. Yeah. I'm pretty sure lesbians live longer on average than the rest of us. <laughs> Because mama was like, I know I want to have a baby. Boop, check. And, <laughs> and I would like to someone, do it for free. <laughs> someone I'm friends with who may also be somewhere queer. So I don't even have to worry about you being ignorant as fuck right. about me, the people I choose to surround myself with. And you'll probably also be a dope parent. I'm good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bring on the sush. I'd rather have... Okay, so first of all... <laughs> I said it. I don't care, and I'm taking it back. I would rather have a baby with somebody who wanted a co-parenting situation than somebody who just wanted to be married. So I feel like a lot of people mm. have babies because they think they're supposed to, or they're married, and that's the like the next thing to do. Yeah. But I would rather have a baby with somebody who was like, you know, I would like first to be a love. parent. <laughs> then comes marriage. Yeah. Then, then comes, comes baby and a baby girl. You know, allegedly. Like it's ingrained into your <laughs> yeah. psyche when you're fucking one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and that is like literally what we teach kids. So, yeah, I just think that's a better way. Ugh, excuse me. Just a better way to approach the whole situation. What are we, where are we at on time? Because I could skip this. Um, We're like 30 minutes in. Um, so. Ooh, it's some water. Quavo said there's a snippet of a song where he raps about a slimy, sneaky girl that he would be taking a Bentley back from. Okay. And this is after, you know, he and Sweetie last Christmas, some Christmas, <laughs> we're all over the internet with this Bentley that he got her. A powder blue Bentley, Bentega bands busting, Bentley <laughs> Barty busting off the Baby bando. mamas. Um, and so he raps about, like, taking a car back from her, and so now Nick's just like, oh, <laughs> where on the street is the Quavo took his Bentley back from Sweetie that he bought her. Da, 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 da. And then Sweetie did a TikTok where she did this best friend challenge thing where she's like playing herself as her friend. Like, where are the keys to my car? Girl, you know, I would never take the keys to your car. He, 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 he. And then it turns out the best friend Sweetie actually had the Bentley keys in her mm, hand or some shit. Like, gotcha. <sighs> that was like the worst explanation of what this is. <laughs> but girl, it's what I have for you. I'm on the edge of glory tonight. So what I will say is that I don't care about this. Quavo apparently had a representative say before any of this, there was a rumor that he was planning on repossessing the, oh, Bentley Continental GT. There you go for the rich people or people who want a Bentley. That he was repossessing this. I didn't know that you can repossess a gift. I mean, if it's not paid for, you can. <laughs> if it's not in the person's name, you can. Okay. You learn something new every I day. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Like, if, if it's a gift, then he should have put it in her name and it should have been paid in full. But I mean, I'm not just, dis- I <laughs> simply don't know. I mean, I I'm, I'm I never pretty sure. A fucking car. And I really feel like, I mean, so what if he does? Go ahead and take your Bentley back. That girl will be just fine. She don't need I your mean, damn car. So I don't, it's, it's probably not even her only car. I don't, okay. Yeah, so, exactly. It's probably not even her only car. Um, The rumor came out before this snippet, and his representatives made sure to say that that rumor was flat out false so i'm not really sure what this snippet is so then what's the right so then what's the point of the lyric then what what's the song for i will say of all of the things going on today 
a rich nigga taking a car from another rich nigga when neither one of y'all are walking anywhere is just right. kind of like, how much am I supposed to give? Exactly. I understand it's cute, like for the water cooler or the Zoom break or whatever we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, because it's petty, you know, the pettiness, it, like that's the discussion. But ultimately, so. Right, exactly. Ultimately, who gives a shit? Like, this doesn't change anything about the quality of life for either one of them. Like, they're going to continue to go about their day being just fine, black and rich and and fucking thriving. So, And also, what's, like, awesome about taking a gift back that you gave someone? <laughs> like, what about that is, like, better. a flex? It, it just makes, it just soothes the ego, I think, more than anything else. And it's more for the fans, I think, than it is for the celebrity themselves. Like, I really think it's more for the little army of niggas who worship these niggas to be like, ah, that's why you took the Bentley bag. That's why you took the Birkin bag. It just makes me think of, you know, in that, in Biggie's video where he kicked out homegirl and then threw all of her coats and shit out on the curb or out on the lawn or what. And niggas thought that was the most gangster thing ever mm-hmm. to do. Dude. And it's like, he was like, you can keep these things. You just can't keep them in here. Mm. <laughs> and now it's like, no, I'm going to take back a car that you could likely afford your damn self. Aren't I awesome? Right. Whatever. Like, who gives... Right. I mean, we all together because I just... I don't care. They will be fine. Both of them. Kid Cudi performed recently on the latest Saturday Night Live. Song is off of his latest album, Man on the Moon. Part three, I believe. Um... So, the thing that's, like, the topic of everyone's discuss That didn't sound right. The topic of discussion for everyone from this mm-hmm. is that um, Kaye decided to do, like, a little tribute to Kurt Cobain in his performances. Mm-hmm. So, he sort of dressed uh, like Kurt Cobain in... Both performances. One for the song uh, Tequila Shots, I believe. And one for the song Sad People. And in the Sad People song, or performance rather, Mm -hmm. he decided to wear a floral print dress. Much like one that... uh, Kurt Cobain wore... Well, Kurt Cobain was pictured in dresses a couple of times. But there's one specifically that this was designed to look like. Um, And so, you know, I'm sure niggas on the internet are having their fun with that. I'm a huge (laughs) fan of Nirvana and Kurt Cobain, so I appreciated the gesture. I also really like Kid Cudi and his latest album, um, so I really didn't do too much diving into y'all bitching and moaning about a nigga wearing a dress and the feminization of the black man or whatever hotel shit yeah. y'all are talking to about today because I just don't have it. But what I will say about uh, the dress is didn't like it. Um, <laughs> was it not cute? I just didn't care for it on him. I didn't feel like it compliment. I don't know, maybe from watching too much Drag Race, it was like it was giving me a little too much the yes. help, like. <laughs> I was just about to say, call Simone and ask about a dress because baby. <laughs> I didn't like the cut of it. I felt like maybe it needed to be like a little bit shorter, maybe like a poofier or something like that. Maybe a three quarter sleeve. I just feel like the spaghetti really wasn't like, comp- it didn't complement anything. It really yeah. didn't give me nothing. It was just giving me like the help or, mm. or like them. Okay. Or just <laughs> some sort of like, evil white woman in the 50s so i didn't really enjoy the dress itself but i enjoyed the sentiment yeah Um, it made me think of like when you buy something just you know at h&m or some similarly priced retailer 
thinking that forever it's, 21 right thinking that it's made for your black body but it isn't it's made for mm. a prepubescent white girl <laughs> and that's who it fits properly it does not fit your black ass properly like that's kind of what it looked like to me but i also i think i saw like one picture and then promptly stopped caring and completely forgot about it until just now so the dress is made by uh virgil abloh oh Off-White. no <laughs> Not that I thought y'all went down to Times Square and got that for twelve ninety nine. <laughs> Virgil don't do custom tailoring. What the fuck? <laughs> the custom angle length dress Woo! will apparently be a part <laughs> of a line that Kid Cudi is doing with Off White. Uh, so you yourself may soon be able to wear the uh, no, Kid Cudi Off White Saturday Night Live Kurt Cobain dress that looks like Lana Del Rey would want to be buried in. Period. That looks like main floor H and M Spring Twenty Twenty One. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I don't care. I, I love Kid Cudi. I love, love, love Kurt Cobain, but I hate this. I I hate this dress. Like the dress that it that it's inspired by almost it was very of the times it kind of looked like a dress like a girl that would hang in the library a lot would wear mm-hmm. it was almost moo moo esque but like it was just a different vibe this is like something that like millie bobby brown would wear to the emmys yeah. i hate it okay. i don't like it at all so yeah i mean i definitely was not a fan of it and i love that you mentioned drag race because seriously any one of those girls any one of them, except maybe Utica. No, because Utica's clothes was cute. Utica, Utica can can Utica make can, garments. No, Are you it was me? it was Utica. I'm thinking of that squirrel hair situation. Oh well, yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, but I'm, like, but, but clothes <laughs> wise, Utica her had now. her, and she she looked good most of the time. So really, ask ask somebody else. That sleeping bag <laughs> shit that she made. Unbelievable that that bitch turned that into actual <laughs> like, contour. Like, incredible. And did you see, are you caught up on Drag Race? Because... Let's move on. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. So, well, I would just say Simone came out in something for her um, runway look this past week that Nigga, when I tell you you would die, be resurrected on the third day and die once more at how fucking incredible this looks. Like I am watching so many things. I just I'm, I actually I'm screamed. I screamed when I saw her. I just want to sleep for the rest of the year. I want to hibernate. Like I don't I So the last thing in the topics this week Okay. is the absolute unomitted good call. Of Usher Raymond. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do this because that story's fake. <laughs> what? Yes. they. <laughs> TMZ posted an update a few hours ago, and apparently he actually did pay real money, and somebody in his team left the fake bucks like on the stage as like a joke ch- slash like Girl, girl my balls. Tour. I hate y'all. So that's it for the yeah. high topics. We're done for the <laughs> we week. I fucking hate it. y'all bitches. No, there's nothing to talk about. Fuck Usher and the Bucks and the Vegas asked residency. The girl and she was All like... of y'all strippers that in that particular club, <laughs> fuck y'all. Fuck TMZ too. Fuck all like fuck all y'all. I'm done with the hot tops. We're gonna take a break and we'll come and read your letters. So this week's episode is being brought to you guys by Me Undies because they believe that comfort is about more than what's touching your skin. It's about feeling comfortable in your damn skin. I own a couple of pairs of Me Undies draws myself. And I'm here to tell you that <laughs> there is just something about that fabric. I, you got to feel it for yourself. <laughs> Express yourself every day in new limited edition prints. They source the softest, most comfortable fabrics imaginable, imaginable and their styles are available in sizes extra small to 4XL. Each month, replenish your basics and build your collection with styles that are anything but basic. Styles that let you be the truest version of yourself right down to your core. You got sexy, you got fun, you got cute. They've got all kinds of stuff. And no pressure because you can always skip a month if you want. Plus, enjoy discounted pricing, controlled shipping, and exclusive early access. Love your butt and get your butt a membership. MeUndies is a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you can get 15% off and free shipping. So go and get it right now. 15% off your first order and free shipping. Go to MeUndies.com slash read. Like I said, try them all myself. I love them. That's MeUndies.com slash read get some new draws and feel good on your bum 
and let's get back to the show. All right, folks. We have returned. It is now time to listen to you talk about your boyfriend or, <laughs> or fucking mama or debt or whatever. It's literally all of those things. I don't know how you called it, but yes. Yeah. Send your letters to asktheread at gmail.com. We may read them aloud on the show. This first letter comes from RJ who says, my boyfriend of three years is an anti-vaxxer and it has caused multiple arguments between us. We are both black and in our 30s, so we agree on occasional mistrust of the government, especially when it comes to black health and well-being. However, I love that they said we're black and in our 30s. <laughs> so, of course, we don't trust the government. Of course we don't. <laughs> like, there was nothing else. <laughs> no. That's, and and, and we got there's it. nothing to question. Yeah, yeah, we get it. We get it. However, the pandemic has sent his conspiratorial Hotep Anon rhetoric into batshit territory, complete with theories about microchips and marks of the beast. Oh, God. I normally try to steer such conversation elsewhere, but that's getting harder to do. And he has even said that his family doesn't be doesn't want to be around anyone who gets the vaccine because, quote, they know what the elites are planning for black people. End quote. What? Yes, Charles. I have (laughs) I have a lot of anxiety about covid. I've had family members who died from it and I have sheltered in place and worked from home for over a year now. Even though I'm hesitant about the vaccine, I have every intention of getting vaccinated and I get frustrated as hell when my boyfriend tries to manipulate me with misinformation, scripture and crazy shit that I know he got from some obscure crevice of the Internet. I wish I could make him understand how wrong he is about the facts without it becoming a gigantic, verbally abusive argument. Do y'all know anybody like this? What do you suggest I do? I do have a therapist, but we have not yet unpacked this vaccine issue. Thanks and love you, RJ in California. RJ. Mm-hmm. That's You rough. said three years? Mm-hmm. My boyfriend of three years. And he just sprung this microchip mark of the beast bullshit on you now? Listen, uh, that's rough. <laughs> that's unfair. <sighs> I'm not in support of this nigga, RJ. I'm not going to lie to you. (laughs) I don't like him. So, um, he says his family doesn't even want to be around nobody that gets vaccinated. Because, obviously, if you've been paying attention, Fauci and M and everybody, they've been clearly telling people that if you get vaccinated, you will become a werewolf. You will. Possibly a zombie maybe a witch. Mm -hmm. So it's imperative for all of us who are not going to be vaccinated because you know I'm never going to do that. I ain't trying to be no witch. Um, It's imperative for us to stay safe out here because who really wants to be in true blood? Not me, girl. (laughs) Um, I get it. I get it. And I feel like RJ, you're the problem. (laughs) If you don't tell this nigga to scoop himself and up and get the fuck around, like, are you what? Like, it's what? Yes, I understand people who are like, look, vaccine shit. No, I don't. I don't. I'm not comfortable with that. Uh, comfortable with that or about that because black and history. Liter- like, you just can't blame many black people for feeling that way. Right. That is not something that just fell out of the fucking sky. Um. But when you start talking to me about fucking Terminator and Jason Bourne and the fucking RoboCop and the Mark of the Beast and all of this other fucking Constantine, like, get the fuck, just, b- bitch, no. Like, you don't always have to, like, have some deep-ass theory about what's really going on in order for you to feel like, I don't know, Gandalf or who, the <laughs> Oracle. Like, shut the fuck up. Mm. Just don't get it, bitch, if that's what you... If you're so yes. worried that it's going to turn you into a zombie bitch, then good, great. But you know what the fuck I'm tired of? I'm tired of not seeing my mom and them. I'm tired mm-hmm. of having to work from fucking home. I'm tired of not being able to go down to Bella Noche. So you, your mama, your cousin, your sister, and all yes. of them, y'all can stay over here. 
I'm going to go ahead, get my things together and go and live my motherfucking life. Mm-hmm. Period. Because I'm not like, I'm not even going to argue with people who are just like, personally, vaccine, da, 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 da. I'm not arguing with anti-vaxxers. There's so many other ways to be miserable. But. What a word. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> going to sit up and make excuses for anybody, relationship or not, who's talking to me about not getting the vaccine because it's True. actually going to inflect in, in, in infect you with the, the you know the mutant gene, and then you know I don't know Magneto is going to come and happen to you. ask you to be a part of the Brotherhood, and then you have to choose between the Brotherhood or do you go work for Professor X or. What happens? Like, what like, side sorry are you trying to be you, on? Where niggas turning the horses at the end? I fucking hate y'all. Like, <laughs> yeah, I um, I have friends who are hesitant about the vaccine and who are not lining up to get it. And like if you said, I completely understand people being hesitant about it. I mean, the person who wrote this, RJ, said that they are hesitant about it. So I fully get right. that. It's when niggas go off the deep end and act like the government needs to microchip you with a voluntary vaccine when you give them and private companies all the data that they could ever possibly want to know about you just by carrying around that iPhone or that Android with you every goddamn where you go, that there would be no need to do something like that. Like, it's when niggas go off into the ridiculous that I start to make fun of you. Because... I mean, honestly, this is probably bad from like a public health perspective, but I don't really care if you niggas get the vaccine or not. What I have realized is that I was worried about me dying. (laughs) I was worried about me being hospitalized with this fucking virus. Like, that's why I took all the precautions I did. That's why I stopped going outside for a long ass time. That's why Dustin can't come over. Like, all of that was out of my own self-preservation. And See, so you are the one who will be at risk if you happen to catch COVID and are unvaccinated. And that is a risk you can take if you choose to. Just like people who are anti-vaccine are looking at the rest of us and like, oh, you getting vaccinated. That's the risk you take. And you right, girl. I took the risk that I might be the one in one million or whatever the odds are to have like an emergency reaction to the vaccine. I took that risk for my own health and you are not taking the vaccine for your own health and you are free to do that. But like, it's you that's at risk. So once all I care about is the people who have to be around y'all who don't have no choice but to be around y'all. I want them to have first access to the vaccine, teachers and essential personnel, workers, shit like that, healthcare workers, obviously, Etc. But if they choose not to get it, that's their choice. And if they get COVID and get sick, they will have to deal with that same way I will. So best of yeah, luck. See, <laughs> I don't really give a fuck if I die from this shit. See, but I'm pretty fond. Please. I'm pretty fond of my mom. Yeah. Quite like my dad. Yeah. Brothers are cool. And I'd like to see them <laughs> without you know, the possibility of them dying. Right. So that is why I am going to let them put that shit in my body (laughs) twice. That is why. (laughs) Also, I drink Hennessy straight quite often. I am always high on cannabis. Listen. I eat garbage every (laughs) fucking day. I have often drank New York City tap water. I also breathe New York City air. So bring it. Day. <laughs> what else you got like, for me, cuz? If this shit gives me three eyes, the better to see you with, bitch. I'm tired of y'all. Next you, question. You niggas literally ate Taco Bell all your lives, and now you're talking about, but I don't know what's in it. Girl. Okay. Again, that's your choice, but conspiracies... And the ridiculous shit, I just don't have the time for. If I were you, I would bring it up to my therapist um, sooner than later. And I would just honestly try to avoid the conversation until I had clearer direction on how I wanted to approach this. Like, is this bad enough to where you're considering breaking up with him? I don't know why you're not. I mean, I I would be. I would be considering breaking up with somebody who truly believed that the government was trying to microchip me or give me a mark of the beast <laughs> with a voluntary vaccine that white people are scamming their way into getting. If it's so terrible, why are white people lying and cheating and pretending to live somewhere else and paying extra money and all this other shit to get their hands on the vaccine? 
It's not something that the government is forcing anybody to do. They're not driving out to the hood and making niggas take it and nobody else. Like, I don't. But best of luck to you, RJ, as you figure that shit out. Let's move on. Our next letter comes from Chelsea, who says, I have never had a good relationship with my mom, who is a textbook narcissist, and she has never apologized or been accountable for anything she does wrong. With the help of therapy, I've been able to reach a place of acceptance around my mom's behavior and her personality, and I have worked to change my actions to better interact with her. Last week, I was on a Zoom for my brother's birthday. My dad was trying to explain the plot of One Night in Miami. Have you seen that movie? TV show? No, Whatever not it yet. is. Okay. I know what you're talking about. It's a movie. Okay. I have, I have never even heard of it. So, um, my it's, dad was trying to explain. Do you know what it's about? Not at all. I'm assuming it's like a, what's that movie where they go to Vegas and they have a crazy bachelor's party? It's about a night that. Um, With the white oh. boys. Please Google it for me. Okay. Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, and someone were in Miami together. One oh. Was it Re- is Regina, Regina King the producer of this movie? Yeah, Regina King has Fuck directed me. it. She I directed it. Know. Oh, okay. This Wait, no, this sounds good. Yeah, it does sound amazing. I just haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. Well, let me... I'm going to put this... Well, I mean, I haven't seen it either, but okay. <laughs> um, where, where are we with that? So, okay, yes. So her dad was trying to explain the plot um, to her brother. And then she comes back and says, at one point in his explanation, my mom pops her head in the frame and uses the N-word. She tried to justify it by saying that's what they called themselves in the movie. If you haven't figured out by now, my parents are middle-aged, ignorant white people. And I usually feel like I have to educate them on racial issues. Although me and my siblings and even my brother's girlfriend all had a reaction to her using that word, I had the biggest reaction. My mother told me to get a grip and I got so mad that I said, fuck you, mom, and left the Zoom to avoid blowing up even more. I needed a couple of days to calm down and then I wrote both my parents a very long and unemotional email explaining why what my mom did was wrong, why it hurt me so much, and what I would need from them both to move on. I told my mother that I needed her to apologize and to acknowledge that what she did was wrong. I also told her that we all have principles and lines that we won't tolerate being crossed. And this is one for me. I told her if she could not give me an unconditional apology and take accountability, that I would not be able to communicate with her. And I would no longer be staying with my parents when I go home for my sister's bridal shower in May. I told my dad that I need him to stop making excuses for my mom and to acknowledge that what happened was wrong. My mother essentially responded with a fuck you and said that she was only sorry that I was unable to have a rational conversation. I was disappointed in this response, even though I should have expected it. I made the decision to stick to my boundaries and stop talking to my mother. I've never liked her or had a good relationship with her. And this was just too much. I am upset, but I am also relieved that I finally made the decision to cut a toxic person out of my life. I wanted to ask y'all how I should deal with this situation when I go home next month. No, you didn't. Mm hmm. Yes, she did. Crystal, if it's okay, I'd like to ask how you deal with your father when you have to be around him and what it's like to maintain a relationship with your mom while not having one with your dad. I want to continue to speak to and see my dad when I can, but I am afraid that I will not be able to because of my mother. Any input or advice would be greatly appreciated. Thanks and love you both, Chelsea. Um, well, since she called me out by name, I guess I'll stop. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> this nigga um okay well let's see so since you asked me specifically how i deal with my father when i have to be around him um the simple answer is that i am never around him i don't have to be around him because um he and my mother divorced like 10 or 11 years ago so uh that's not an issue for me i'm sorry for you that your parents are still together as weird as that sounds um and So my relationship with my mother really has nothing to do with my relationship with my father. She doesn't talk to me about him. And anytime he happens to come up in conversation, I just be like, oh, I thought that nigga died. And people get the point and move on. So um, that I cannot help you with. But as far as like the situation itself, I think when you go home for your sister's bridal shower, you just have to be ready to stick to your boundaries that you have established with them. like. You said it and now you have to follow through and really mean it. If you're not staying with them, then get your 
lodging plans together now so that you know where you're going. Um, And if you talk to your father, then make sure it's not in the presence of your mother. If that means you don't go over to their house the whole time you're there, then let let it be that. But make sure that you send the message that what you said was not a joke because your mom, it sounds like she might not be in a place to give a shit. And she's going to, you know, just dig her heels in and feel however she wants to feel. But maybe your father, when he sees how much this upsets you, will be willing to um, at least have the conversation with you about it so that y'all can maintain a relationship. So, I mean, and that's really the bare minimum. Like, the, the this is, I'm sorry that this is, like, such a hard thing to do, but this is the bare minimum for adults and, like, standards for how we treat one another how we talk to each other and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, more than anything, I would tell you to just be ready to stick to your fucking guns about this and make sure your siblings know how you feel. So they're not trying to drag you into some, you know, he said, she said, or some surprise, you know, we set up Chelsea and mom for a dinner together, reality TV show shit. Like just make sure everybody knows how you feel and, and then be ready to follow through on it. And I, I truly wish you the best. It's not an easy thing to do, but, When you're ready, you're ready and it's worth it. So I don't know if you have any advice for her seeing as this has like fuck all to do with your life. And, you know, your parents are not at all like this. Me? Yeah. I I just all I have to say is that I appreciate your sentiment and what you're um, dealing with. And I hope that it works out the absolutely best way possible for you. Because otherwise, I'm just going to be saying horrible things about your mama. And what does that serve? I mean, it serves nobody. Anyway. But that's fine. That's not wicked. <laughs> like, I mean, vicious. It's it's pointless. I mean, her mother so is God truly a you. terrible person. Like, for you to call her a narcissist and to say that you've never had a good relationship with her, like, that's usually usually when people are like, I've never liked my parents. You know, unless Mm -hmm. you were born a fucking psychopath or something like unless you were born a sociopath or somebody with like literally no feelings and no capacity to feel emotion, then that was probably your parents fault. So I yeah, I just I I mean, I see you. I'm definitely on your side on this. And you didn't ask whether you thought you were right because you shouldn't. But, you know, it's a hard thing to do. Confronting your parents is just difficult. And you just got to make sure that you're ready to. To let them know that you grown and you mean the shit that you say. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, I mean, and that is the gift of adulthood. We can take back the power that we did not have as children. As kids, we could not say, girl, fuck you and your backwards ass, dumb ass beliefs with your stupid, hypocritical ass self. Like, we just simply could not say those things. But now you can. So stand up in it. Um, and, And best of luck to you. I hope at least your dad responds positively, if not both of them. Um, let's scooch on over to our last letter. This comes from Nikki, who says, one of my closest friends is getting married this year. I'm happy for her because she really wants to be married. But there are not enough words to tell y'all how tired I am with this terrible ass love story. My friend is marrying a man who has put her through the ringer over the past 10 years. This nigga has given her STIs. He has cheated more times than I can count. He had two kids on her within one year. And there have been multiple occurrences of domestic violence and he has had many stints in jail. The issue is that my friend expects for all of us bridesmaids and especially me to have a certain level of excitement about her union, even though she is vocal about the fact that she is settling for him. She also says things to me like, you're so strong for having standards, which I find to be disrespectful and disingenuous. (laughs) Yes, because it's not like I have a greater capacity to be alone than anybody else. And it sucks to constantly see fellow black women settle for struggle love. I will never take the onus off black men and how they enact this harm. But I also hate how black women perpetuate the idea that we are required to accept this harm and die in the trenches for niggas who refuse to treat us as human beings who deserve love without going through hell first. So I'm wondering what y'all starts, what y'all's thoughts are and how I can address this with my friend without sounding bitter. Since I've been forced into this bridesmaid role, how do I stand strong in not supporting bullshit while also supporting my friend and what she wants to do? How do I create these healthy boundaries while not making my friend feel like shit for her decision? Thanks, Nikki. Mm, 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 mm. 
Take it away. I don't have it today, girl. <laughs> I'm gonna just like, cause I don't let. Like, what are you talking about? This nigga had two babies on you in one year. You've had domestic violence uh, situations in your relationship. What else did he burn her house down? What the fuck else did the nigga say? What did she say? Did she, like he had two kids, right? Two kids in a year gave her STIs, domestic right. violence incidents, all kinds, of cheating, in left and out and of right. jail, yep. and all of this other stuff. And you want me to what? Do a backflip, bitch? You better be glad that I'm in this motherfucker in this raggedy ass <laughs> dress. I don't give a fuck. I ain't clinking no glasses over you and 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 Lamont and his fuck shit, bitch. Like you got like, girl, yeah. listen. I'm not going to act as if I'm happy that you are about to be, you know, married into a situation with a nigga that ain't shit. Okay. I'm happy that you're happy, but that's as far as this motherfucking going. And to ask me anything further is just, for me personally, is asking too much. So you might as well go ahead and take this motherfucking kid cutty dress off me right now <laughs> and put it on somebody else and have them be up there with your motherfucking ass and your dumb ass nigga when it comes time to ring the bells and shit. That's how I feel on today. Girl, I don't really have anything else for you. What, what are you supposed to say? What are you, what, what are you supposed to I'm just, like... <laughs> So I'm, I've just been thinking, you know, like through everything you guys have been through, you know, mm. the STIs and the cheating and the abuse. And I just don't know if I, you know, feel like smiling every time. Girl, please. You know exactly why I don't like that nigga and why I'm not happy to be here. And if you don't like it, bitch, find somebody else to do it, period. What's your take? Yeah. I mean, I really feel like what you said there towards the end is probably where she needs to start. Like... I noticed that in this letter, Nikki said that she's been forced into a bridesmaid role, but there's no such thing. You are a bridesmaid because you agreed to be a bridesmaid. You don't actually have to do it. And it's, not blood <laughs> it's not. And not agreeing with your friend marrying this man is actually the perfect reason to not be a bridesmaid. So I think what you have laid out in this letter is what you need to turn around and tell your friend as you tell her that you will be unable to fulfill bridesmaid duties. <laughs> Why the fuck would you want to be? I wouldn't even want to be at the wedding. Yeah. I mean, so, honestly, I would not even want to be at the wedding, much less in official photos with this nigga that I know beats on my friend and had fucking babies on, on her and all this other shit. Like, hell no, I'm not in support of this union, girl. The baby's probably going to be in the pictures soon. Uh, hell, girl, you please. know they are. You better are. be thankful you know I'm even are. coming. You, you better be thankful I'm not even, that I'm even coming. Yeah. You could pass a glass of rosé to every bitch in this room, but me, I don't give a fuck. I'm not clapping hands, dapping nobody. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm here to support you in the best way I know how, and this is what I'm giving, girl. But if you think I'm going to be toasting it up to you and this fuck nigga that I know, this marriage ain't going to last nothing but a solid 17 months. Girl, If push. that, I understand that you um, want to support your friend and you don't want to make her feel like shit for her decisions, but you also cannot choose your friend's feelings about your words over your words. Those can't be more important than you actually saying how you feel. Because right now it sounds like you swallowing a lot to be a quote unquote supportive friend for her. But you should not have to sacrifice your well-being for somebody else's anything. So I mean, don't <laughs> this is not your child. I am speaking. <laughs> yeah, right no, now. don't maybe don't maybe don't do that. You know, maybe don't drag her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you I'm don't, at, and you don't but, have to like, do that. Like you don't you don't have to sit there and cuss her out. But you can say, sis, you know, I've been thinking about it and honestly, I wish I could stand there next to you, but I simply don't support you legally joining yourself to this man, and this is why. This is why, because now you take it on all that heartache. Like niggas don't magically stop cheating just because they get married. Ask just about anybody who's married. Like, like what is, is what, are, what are we on black ink crew? Like what, <laughs> what are you doing? What are, you yeah. really want me to, you to know all of the things that I know about this nigga and be your bridesmaid and pretend I'm excited. Yeah. She won't uh, like, listen, I can only do two of those three. You better go down to the community center and hire some actors, sis, because <laughs> what you're asking for is not realistic. I'm not giving it to you. Yeah. Dude. So if I mean, if I were you, when I talk to her, I would leave out the part about, you know, I hate how black women like you perpetuate the idea that black women have to accept all this bullshit. Like, I would leave that part out uh, because, I wouldn't. well, <laughs> I mean, I would because I feel like you don't need that in order to get your point across. You can just start with the cold, hard facts. <laughs> 
which is like, girl, look at how this man has treated you. Would you want me to marry a man like this? Telling me like, oh my God, girl, you're so strong because you don't settle for niggas. That's not the compliment you think it is because you also shouldn't be settling for niggas. This, you can do much better than this. What happened to you? I can do bad all by myself. Like your friend deserves better than this. And so I would tell her, even though I can't support your marriage, I cannot be a part of your celebration because you deserve to have people in the bridal party who are happy for y'all. And I simply won't be. And saying that you're happy for her because she's getting what she wants and what she wants to get married is to get married is like, okay, but getting to married to somebody who is terrible for you is not a good thing for you. It just isn't. So I'm I'm unable to be there and be truly supportive of the day. Therefore, I won't. However, I am always here for you. We can sit here and talk about it right now. If you need some time to think about it and come talk to me, we can do it then. Like, I'm not going to not be your friend, but I'm also not going to pretend like this is something I co-sign because I don't. This is gross. That nigga's terrible. And you are much better off without him. So we can talk about that, but I won't be wearing the dress and, and you know, taking jello shots with you in the club two weeks before you get married. And I won't be doing... You I mean, to, we'll take a shot. Um, <laughs> no reason to not drink. I'm not spending all that money on on a dress and shoes I'll never wear again. I'm I'm saving my time and my peace of mind, and I'm not going to be a part of it. And also, now that I'm thinking about being a bridesmaid and and friends getting married, please stop taking the things I say on this podcast and then going and harassing my friends in real life thinking that I'm talking about them. Tell me why. Tell me. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I really, truly don't. Okay. I don't. All right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you then, but for those of you who have been doing this, please fucking stop. Please. You don't know the people I'm talking about. And even if you did mind your business, thank you so much. (laughs) Um, yeah. So best of luck to you, Nikki, but I think more than anything, You need to get out of the mindset that you're being forced into a bridesmaid role because you're not. You're choosing a bridesmaid role and you can choose to not do that. And you have every reason to choose not to do this because this nigga sounds absolutely wretched. So best of luck to you as you first figure it out within yourself, whether this is something you can do and then having the conversation with your friend um, and going from there. Uh, But please hit us back and let us know how it turns out. That's going to wrap up. The questions for this week, send yours to asktheread at gmail.com. We're going to take another quick break and be right back. Guys, this week's episode is coming to you from ZipRecruiter. If you're looking to hire someone, it can be challenging, but ZipRecruiter makes it incredibly easy to help find you qualified candidates fast. You can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash the read now. Whether you're trying to hire a civil engineer, a pediatric nurse, an attorney, any kind of job, they've got matching technology that finds people with the right experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. It's so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day and right now you can try it for free at ziprecruiter.com slash three that's right if you go to ziprecruiter.com slash three today you can try ziprecruiter for free one more time that is ziprecruiter.com slash three t-h-e-r-e-a-d go try it out get a job give a job have some fun let's move on Hey, y'all, if there's ever been a year to make the moms and the mother figures in your life feel loved and appreciated on Mother's Day, it's this one. So honor that special woman in your life with a heartfelt, sentimental gift that the whole family can cherish forever. And that's StoryWorth. StoryWorth is an online service that helps every mother figure in your life share stories through thought provoking questions about their memories and personal thoughts. It can be a really fun new way to engage with them, especially if you can't be together in person. So every week, StoryWorth will email a different story prompt and usually this is questions that you have never thought to ask like what is some of the best advice your mother ever gave you or what is one thing you wish I knew about you from when you were young all kinds of different prompts and the weekly stories make your family feel close even if you're not together after one year StoryWorth will compile all of her stories including photos into a beautiful keepsake book that is shipped for free so if you are like most of us in this past year you have 
maybe been apart from your mother and you really miss her deeply and just wish you could reconnect. Um, some of you have seen how your mothers have hustled to take care of the family and everyone around them during the pandemic. And so we just really see how like important it is for them to feel appreciated, loved, valued for everything they do. Um, this sounds like an incredible idea. I actually can't wait to get started because I would love to have me and my brothers submitting these kind of questions just to see how my mother answers. And she's the type who would get like super emotional and cry really hard for a long time over a gift like this. So if you're like me and you want to do something really meaningful, then consider Story Worth. Give your mom the most significant, meaningful gift this Mother's Day with Story Worth and get started right away with no shipping required by going to storyworth.com slash read and you'll get $10 off your first purchase. Again, that's storyworth.com slash R-E-A-D for $10 off. Go check them out. And now let's wrap up the show. Okay, folks, we are back. It is now time for the read. It is. Take it away, Crystal. Okay, I am going to pass my read this week. Pass the read like we used to. And this one comes from someone who calls themselves a pissed off journalist and said, this read goes out to all the fraudulent ass, clout chasing, influencer ass, wannabe journalists who are becoming more bold and annoying with their bullshit. By now, the world is aware of DMX's passing. However, 12 hours before on Thursday night, social media was sent into a frenzy over inaccurate information that DMX was already gone. RIP DMX tweets were coming in with no fucking credible source. Rather, some random ass verified account that had no standing in news or anything related. Have you low bottom feeding bitch ass niggas have no fucking shame? How do you fucking misinterpret a message and then just tweet it out as fact? My problem is not with bloggers or other mediums with actual credible and reliable sources and credentials. My problem is with you whores who have no earthly idea what the fuck you're doing in this profession. You bitches aren't journalists. You're niggas who are either repeating news you heard or read from another site and reposting it to your shitty, empty, no follower ass blog. Or even worse, you're stealing somebody else's work and then calling it your own. I am so fucking tired because you bitches have no consequences for running inaccurate information and stealing from actual hardworking journalists. Listen, it's not my fault that you couldn't satisfy them requirements to get that degree, nor is it my fault that you couldn't handle the pressures of the business and wanted to find a shortcut to becoming the great value version of the Shade Room, Hollywood Unlocked, or some other bullshit that niggas flock to. It's not my fault you can't succeed in your dream of standing on a red carpet just so you can say, hey, it's your girl, and we don't even know who the fuck you are. It's also not my fault you sucked the wrong dick and that man nor his dick could have made you a star. Journalists go through too much bullshit just to make sure we put out the right information for y'all to be fucking it up with your impulsive thieving ass behavior. Leave this shit to journalists who follow ethics and standards, regardless of whether they have a degree and do suffer consequences when we fuck up and get it wrong. I want to send a big fuck you to Saint on Twitter and all these other weird DJ academics niggas who talk so much shit about people in the media, but try their hardest to be us and then fall flat on their fucking faces every time. Get the fuck out the way and stay in your fucking lane or go back to selling flat tummy tea or them jars of sea moss out your trunk for the summer bodies. Signed, a pissed off journalist. Um, mm, Yeah, I wanted to say thank you to this person because I also saw the tweets from a brand. I don't know what it is, a lifestyle brand. Maybe they sell tennis shoes. Don't really know what Saint is. But these niggas basically just reported something as fact that they got off of Lunell's Instagram and Lunell and them were both wrong. Or, you know, they just took her post and assumed for it to mean another thing. And a lot of the issue, like a lot of the problem around DMX's death was that niggas wanted to be the first ones to call it without actually having any facts at all. And I really hate that about the social media era, these early years of social media. I hate that. People are so pressed about like engagement and analytics and metrics and retweets and all that other bullshit that they stop caring about humanity. Y'all are talking about a person's life. It might be blog clicks for you. It might be 15 cent if somebody actually reads through the whole blog and then clicks on your affiliated link for you. You're talking about somebody's husband, somebody's son, somebody's dad, somebody's friend. That's a human being. It makes me think about how TMZ reported Kobe's death before Vanessa and her family was even notified. That's the kind of horrific shit that we have gotten to 
in society these days. It's really fucking terrible. So thank you to this journalist for writing it in, making it plain and stating it clearly, because really, like everybody find your lane and stay in it. Reporting the news is a science. You can't just pull it out your ass. It's no longer news at that point. So please know what the fuck you're doing before you try to do it. And amen to that. I'm done. Right. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, well, this week I didn't really have many uh, big feelings. I have a couple of what I used to call furious thoughts. I thought about making this a YouTube video, but that requires work that I don't have time for at the moment. So, mm. whatever. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, just a couple of quick things that annoy me or have been annoying me lately first i saw the powerpuff girls shoot photo thingies that y'all sent me a million times as we discussed they're doing a live action version of the powerpuff girls for the cw they started shooting some like flashback scenes or something and it looks awful I don't understand why nobody could at least press the dresses they were wearing. Mm. There wasn't an iron or a steamer or something. It just looked like they literally came no. from the costume shop and took them dresses out of plastic bags and then put them on. It looked horrible. But God bless them. Of course, they made the black girl buttercup. Donald Faison is playing the professor. I think some random white man is playing Rodo Jojo because, of course, he's not going to be a monkey. It's going to be ridiculous. But people will likely watch it just to see how bad it is and then hate watch it because they hate it or surprisingly like it or whatever. Enjoy. Next, um, I watched Godzilla vs. King Kong. I was very upset with the amount of Godzilla discrimination in this film. I understand that a lot of y'all probably prefer uh, King Kong over Godzilla because he's the mammal and apes are cute. Even though most of y'all's parents, like one of the people who wrote in a letter today, are far more reptilian than anything else. So I don't understand why everybody was beefing with Godzilla. The nigga was literally minding his business. Spoiler alert, the real bad guy or humans. Um, so he came out of the ocean to fix y'all's motherfucking mistake. And now you sicking a monkey on this bitch. And then he's getting jumped, did all of this stuff, whooped your nigga's ass, by the way, and then went to go and fight again. Mm. And when it was all said and done, my nigga was like, great, and left. Literally came out of the ocean to fix y'all's goddamn mistake. I just felt like there wasn't enough understanding and empathy on Godzilla's side in this particular film. And I don't fucking get it. I really don't. Like, because Godzilla is also an icon. They both are. So I don't know why it had to be Kong's movie. It felt very one-sided and Republican, and I didn't <laughs> enjoy that. Next, I've been watching The Challenge on MTV. Why? Because I've dragged that show and the producers on here before. It's because I'm a loser and I'm a glutton for punishment. So I've continued to watch it, and without getting into it too deep, I will just simply say I'm so fucking tired of the way that y'all have treated Anissa. Y'all have disrespected that lady so many guys. God damn times on this motherfucking season. And just like she said, she didn't want to happen. It came to right before the final is supposed to happen. Y'all threw her into elimination and she went the fuck home. But the thing that really annoys me is the fact that everybody always treats Anissa like she's worthless. She's a layup. She's dead weight. She's this, that, and a third. And let's call it for what it is. Y'all do it because A, she a black girl and B, she's big. That's it. And y'all always feel like she can't compete or she's going to hold a teammate down or whatever because she's thicker than a lot of the other girls. When, if we want to be honest, I, and, and I won't even get into any specific body shaming, I will simply say a lot of you niggas that got a lot to say on this motherfucking show could stand to have a dietitian and do a little extra cardio your motherfucking selves. All right? Y'all be burnt out too the same way plenty of the skinny motherfuckers on that show mm -hmm. be running and he... <coughs> And can't breathe and all that other stuff. So the fact that y'all always use that shit with Anissa all of the fucking time disgusts me. And what really broke my heart is that when she got eliminated, she left saying, I really just wanted for the woman who wins this season to be a woman of color. And all that's left are women of color. And it just frustrated the fuck out of me because it's like, they just like shit on this girl to her face the whole time. And still as a black girl, you're walking away from this situation just like, 
with their heart wide open. Yeah. Fuck y'all. Fuck them. CT, fuck you, especially for the way that you spoke to, to Big T when she was the reason that you got into that motherfucking elimination and got your gold skull in the first motherfucking place. And now you back with her as well, talking about let's wake up at 5 a.m. and do some endurance training and shit. And she on a treadmill and you're drinking tea off to the side. Bitch, you should have been on the motherfucking treadmill yourself, dad bot. And I said I wasn't going to do that. Let me be quiet. I will take that time to also say Big T and, and Cam are two of the most beautiful women on reality television, probably TV in general. Wow, those women are gorgeous. Next, I want to say, if you are out someplace and you see like a street vendor or performer out there doing their thing, there's plenty of this in New York. I'm sure there's loads of it in places like Los Angeles, wherever the fuck else, other parts of, you know, the world. If you out somewhere, let's say you're on South Beach and you see someone out there playing their guitar or making, you know, artisanal bracelets or whatever the fuck, or doing some fancy tricks and choreography, If you're going to record them on your phone, give them some money. I don't understand why y'all motherfuckers will come up and like record these people that are clearly out there showcasing their talent or ability or their goods. And you're going ahead and taking the picture to then go and put on your raggedy ass Instagram live that don't nobody give a fuck about except your cousin and your motherfucking mom. But then you can't give these people the coins that they're working for. Bitch, get a life. Last but not least, I would like to say that if you walking up to an elevator that I'm standing outside of. Oh, Lord. If you are walking to an elevator that I'm standing outside of, and the button for the direction that you are going has been lit up, (laughs) there is no fucking need for you to press it again. Do, do you what are you trying to say what what are you trying to say about my button put bitch obviously i pushed the goddamn button there's a reason it has a light on it so that you know that the fucking elevator car is on its goddamn way you pushing the fucking button again miss is not going to get the goddamn elevator here any quicker your motherfucking button push is not more powerful than mine it's on its way bitch why are you pushing the button again why are you pushing it again mabel what the fuck is your problem marie mm, i swear people do this to be irritating like what the fuck is it like you you thought that that was gonna be like the time like oh somebody pressed the button all right let me come down to the lobby or whatever the fuck because clearly you know i that's my job as an elevator i gotta take the girls to where they need to go but then you <laughs> come around the motherfucking corner and you push the button and then the elevator's like oh god oh no there's a whole bunch of people down there let me move faster girl i gotta go I hate y'all. <laughs> I hate y'all. Oh, Lord. Last but not least, I would just like to say um, to the police in, in Minnesota. Oh, God. Oh, God. I swear. I'm not even. I'm not even. Okay. All I'm, all I'm going to say is. I did is, not have it today for that. I just didn't. All I'm going to say about this, and it will not even be something that has not already been said on this program. If you can't tell Mm. the difference between your taser and your gun, bake. Um, uh, Make belts on Etsy. Yep. Um, start a podcast. Start a no, don't do that. Um, because I definitely don't want to hear what the fuck you have to say, bitch. You could garden. <laughs> um, you could be one of them people that like ride them little bikes with a bonnet on, bonnet on the back of it around like downtown of wherever the fuck you live. When tourists come through, you know, like them old couples be wanting to ride on that little bonnet bike. You could do that, maybe. You should not be any... Not only should you not be a police officer, Mm -hmm. 
you should not have a weapon. You probably shouldn't have knives at home because clearly, yeah, clearly you are not well enough, responsible enough, aware enough um, to handle these things safely. I'm tired. Of this bullshit. Oh, I didn't. I thought. I thought it was my taser. So, mm, for a traffic stop, because it's apparently illegal in Minnesota to have a air freshener hanging from your rearview mirror. Didn't think Saint Olaf was real, but clearly I was wrong. Mm. But yeah, tasing was the thing to do here in this situation. But surprise, it's actually a gun and now this person is dead and you likely won't lose your job. Fuck this country. Fuck the police. I hate every single one of y'all. Suck my dick Monday to Friday and I'm done. Yeah. Um, I am just tired. I'm tired. I I felt immediately exhausted as soon as I heard the news and... Even though it was absolutely not a mistake, if it was, you still deserve to be fired and prosecuted and in that order. Because how dare you have a weapon that can kill people and not be able to tell the difference between that and another weapon that can kill people just with, it just takes a lot more effort. Tasers can kill people. You just have to try a lot harder. So like, if you, even if it was genuinely a mistake, which it was not, you still deserve to be fired and sent to fucking prison. But that won't happen because we live in America and you're a white woman who killed a nigga. And so you'll be just fine. Just like the white bitch in Tulsa who did the same thing. If your taser was bright yellow with pink and purple polka dots on it, you still would have made it. Like, I don't I don't give a fuck about what y'all talking about. Honestly, choke. I hope that y'all burn in hell. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I co-sign. And that wraps up this week's episode of The Read. Check us out on social media at This Is The Read. Our website is thisistheread.com and you can find our merch at shoptheread.com. Anything else from you before we say goodbye? Um. Oh, there's a game, Cozy Grove, that's like a mix between Animal Crossing and Spirit Fair, but it's not really as good as either one one of them so i wasn't sure if i wanted to you said cozy you're done with Cove? animal crossing cozy grove cozy grove it's okay. literally animal crossing and spirit fair mixed together it's just not really as good as either one of them <laughs> but it's the same sort of building crafting making friends that are spirits but the spirits are animals and then like blah 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 and it's cute and you can make a little character so if you just need something to pass the time and help you forget about the fact that we're living in hell then there you go i think it's like 14 dollars or something okay i'll check it out um all right and on that note we are gonna say goodbye and we'll see y'all next week 